Yo, what is up guys? It is Simul back again, and we're going to be talking today about the Mystic Banner. We have four Moonlight units on this banner, guys. You're going to have Bellion, Specimen Says, Spirit Eye Selene, and Judge Kisei. We're basically going to be talking about if these units are worth pulling for on this Mystic Banner, and also if the four-star unit is worth pulling for as well. That being said, before we get started with this video, we have only a few days left in the giveaway on Instagram. All you guys have to do is follow me on Instagram and like the post and we will be selecting three random winners. Just a free way to get stuff guys and it's super easy to participate so make sure you guys do participate before the 25th of December which is when the draw happens. So starting off guys, let's start with Bellion. So if you guys don't know what Bellion does, she is a light knight. Her S3 is an AoE attack that will push back CR by a random amount between 20% and 40% so there is some RNG. And she will also provoke for one turn and increase the defense of herself for two turns. Now this damage will actually scale with her own max HP, making this actually hit super hard, even if you build her very tanky. Next we have her S2 guys, Shackles of Suppression. It is a passive effect. You're going to see that at the start of the battle, or as long as she's alive, you're going to decrease the amount of souls acquired by the enemy by 100%. That means that Talgahel's Ancient Book will not work against Bellion teams, and until you can kill the Bellion, you will not be able to generate any souls at all. Also, you're going to see that at the start of her turn, she'll get an extra random buff to herself for one turn. That buff will either be increased effectiveness, increased crit chance, or continuous healing. All are very good on her because you're going to see that she has a lot of debuffs. You know, she does a lot of damage, so crit chance is very nice. You can build her at 50% crit chance and just bank on the fact that you might get the buff. And continuous healing is very nice because it is her form of built-in self-sustain. Next, we have her S1, guys. It is an AoE attack, has a chance to dispel one buff. And when it is used on her own turn, she has a chance to activate an extra attack. That extra attack will be an AoE attack that decreases speed and hit chance. Just super, super annoying debuffs. And both of these attacks, guys, on her S1 will scale with her max HP. And you can actually soul burn this for 10 souls to activate her ac er, um, extra attack 100% chance of the time. So, very, very powerful. Bellion does a lot of damage. She counters Cleave because she stops soul gain, which is pretty important for Cleave teams, honestly. And she also does a lot of AoE damage. If you put her on Elbrus for Chul Sword, she is just going to counter over and over against teams that have a lot of AoE. And if you put her on Injury Set, she's also very good against slow teams as well. Bellion is definitely a top 5 Moonlight 5 star unit, in my opinion, right now in PvP. So for that reason, you know, definitely probably the best option in this list. Next, we have Specimen Says, Light Thief, you know. A unit that is kind of love and hate, you know, he is very fun to use, but unfortunately he's just hard to use in the right situation. It's hard to actually make him work, um, but you're going to see his S3 is a single target attack that has extinction, and this will reset cooldown when you kill an enemy with it. And you're also going to penetrate defense, going up to 100% if the enemy is stunned. And also, if this skill is available and not on cooldown, when an ally except for Says is attacked, you're actually going to have a 20% chance to counterattack. Very, very nice. Next, we have his S2. A, we attack with a 60% chance to stun and will also CR push himself, and you can soul burn this to actually do more damage. Then we have his S1, guys. It is a single target attack, and you have a chance to stun as well, and when the target is stunned after the attack, you'll also get CR pushed. So if you can actually get lucky and proc your counter and then counter and then stun, you actually can CR and actually, or CR push yourself and actually cut. Problem is, you know, Sez needs a lot of stuns to work, and usually you need a stun with him to actually set up his S3, and you also need to actually have someone to actually CR push him up because he needs a lot of damage, and he's also very squishy. He has no built-in, you know, defenses or self-sustain. He doesn't have a stealth. Some people do run him on Wind Rider so he can actually stay safe after he S3s, uh, but stealth is not that great of an answer to um, being squishy, right? Barriers are a lot better, or actually barriers and stealth are a lot better. I definitely think he needs like a built-in stealth or built-in barriers something for him to be used um, so for now i think he's definitely worth skipping probably one of the uh, two units that you don't want to really pull for on this banner now next we have spirit eye selene spirit eye selene guys white thief very very powerful unit her s3 is a non-attack skill it actually dispels all debuffs from herself and makes her possessed and when she's possessed whenever she gets hit by a critical hit she'll actually counter attack and also heal herself and this cannot be dispelled she will also revive all dead allies before granting immortality to all allies for one turn they will all revive at only one hp though so be careful Next, we have her S2, guys. It's kind of going to work like Tempest Cern's S2 or Roy Mustang's S2. Uh, at maximum Agora, you cannot take more than 51% of your max HP in a hit. And also, when someone dies, you reduce the cooldown of your S3 and will also get souls. So very, very annoying to deal with because, you know, against certain teams that can't actually, you know, cycle fast enough to stop her from S3ing over and over, Spirit Eye Selene just becomes super, super annoying to deal with. 
Now for her S1 guys, it is Mighty Strike. This is a single target attack, and you're going to see that it has a chance to actually proc another attack after. And when she actually is uh, possessed with the buff possession, you'll actually have a double chance to proc the secondary attack. Now the secondary attack does super, super high damage. It will cleanse her of one debuff, and this secondary attack will penetrate the target's defense. And you can also soul burn this S1 to actually grant an extra turn to cycle your S3 cooldown even faster to get that really annoying immortality buff up and revive your allies over and over, and also refresh that possessed buff. Spirit Eye Selene guys, very very good against like APOC Ravi defenses if you guys are fighting against them. Um, but you also have like Light Aiden to do that job as well. Spirit Eye Selene is also very good with barrier units like Fallen Cecilia and stuff like that because of the fact that you have this Sixth Sense passive which will work with barriers. Just keep in mind, you know, I Ning 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 is out and she is a good answer to barrier units. So if you do put Spirit Eye Selene in your PvP teams, um, you're gonna see a lot of like I Ning Nings, a lot of like DJ Bissars, anything with barrier inversion to actually mess up your. Uh, team comp. So that's the third unit, guys. Let's talk about Judge Kisei. Judge Kisei, guys, White Warrior. She used to be a very, very premier cleaver. Now she's kind of like an opening unit. You can see her S3 is an AoE attack that has a chance to actually dispel one buff. I don't know why this is a chance, guys. This, this should just be 100%, honestly. And also will increase skill cooldown three times by one turn. So you have a chance to strip immunity buffs and push back the cooldowns of uh, the enemy team. Also, you give yourself skill nullifier and you can actually soul burn this for an extra turn. So this is very, very good on very fast Judge Kisei's because if you build on high enough effectiveness you can reset the cooldown of the enemy team kind of like how lua works it's just that judge kisei is a bit slower so you have to keep that in mind also we have her s2 guys just an aoe attack that has a chance to put blind which is very annoying to deal with and also s1 a single target attack to decrease defense so you're gonna see like her s1 and s2 are very very simple um they don't really do too much but they do do a lot of damage um her s3 is like the main reason you pick her now as an opening unit uh, but like i said she's a little bit slower and she doesn't have that 100 percent chance to strip like lua does lua actually has like two chances to actually actually strip one buff so it's really really annoying to deal with definitely think judge kisei needs to get another buff in some way so she's actually usable i think she's probably one of the worst ml5 stars in the game right now so out of the four ml5 stars i definitely recommend Be um, bellion the most and then after that if you already have bellion spirit eye selene but honestly if you guys already have bellion guys i'd probably skip spirit eye selene specimen says and judge kisei just because judge kisei and specimen says aren't really that great right now they definitely need some more buffs um specimen says can be used in like guild wars offense and arena offense but you know there's a lot of options now for that area of content if you're looking for a single target nuker even i giselle it works very well you also have spirit eye selene who kind of had her job taken by like light aiden in terms of baiting apoc ravis uh, but the thing is spirit eye selene is still very very good overall and fun to use it's just that you have to keep in mind she does have a lot of counters next we have inferno kawazu guys a dark warrior he is the four star unit on this banner and he's pretty decent honestly for pvp he is a unit that is very good at single target nuking and is a good counter to aoe and you'll see why s3 guys it will strip all enemy buffs from one unit and then you'll also have a hundred percent chance at maximal aurora to inflict two burn effects and you'll also detonate these burns if they land now this will actually ignore effect resist when you're granted vigor which is going to be procced from his s2 and also can be given by conquer lilius so inferno quasi when you do have your s3 like this it's pretty much going to one shot every squishy in the game and do a lot of damage or also one shot like bruisers as well s2 guys passive ability to turn cooldown you're gonna see when you get hit by an aoe attack you'll cleanse yourself fully and also give yourself vigor for two turns heal yourself and also increase cr and you're gonna see that everything that he has will scale with attack the burns and the detonate will also scale with attack as well next we have his s1 guys chance to burn on a single target attack and when you are granted vigor you'll have an extra chance to land the burn and you can also land two burns and you can even sober in this for an extra turn to reset the cooldown of your s3 faster which is going to be three turns so very very short cooldown so Inferno Kawazu guys, he's actually a very good counter pick in World Arena. You can use him against AoE heavy teams and against very low damage teams as well. If you get multiple S3s off with that Vigor buff, he becomes super, super annoying to deal with. Don't think he's worth pitying for because ML4 stars will come eventually to your account if you just play enough. And honestly, Bellion is just way too good to pass up on if you don't have her. If you guys already have Bellion though, I'd probably recommend skipping unless you guys really like Spirit Eye Selene because of the fact that Bellion is so good and the other ML5 stars, they're just like okay, I guess for now.